All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Kevin with Yurkit Racing. Um, thanks for joining in again today. We're picking up where we left off last time, back in the garage on the LT1. Uh, finishing up the prep on the block to have it taken to the machine shop. Um, we're going to knock the cam bearings out today. I'm going to give you an idea, like an overview of how we did that. Um, explain the process to you. Um, we're also going to go over the last few details about what we're planning to do with it before we take it over there. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you haven't already done so, please take a second to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Um, all these things are free to you and help out the channel a lot. We would greatly appreciate it. So, um, anyway, guys, we're going to jump right in. Hope you enjoy it. Now, we're going to get ready to knock the cam bearings out of it. Um, trying to get this block ready to go to the machine shop tomorrow. So, I'm going to go ahead and knock those out. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip you around. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a note of where these oil holes are on the cam bearing so the motor's upside down right now but they got one on this front one at 12 o'clock and then i don't know if you can see it but the other one's uh right up there so i guess that would be call it 6 30 and 10 on the front one but i'm going to go through and uh, kind of note on each bearing uh, where the hole is now and I'm probably going to just end up putting them right back at the same spot. Um, I didn't really have a problem with the motor before, so I think we'll be fine that way. Anyway, let's set you guys down and get back to it. Alright, so we took, I just took and made a quick little diagram to keep track of the positions for all the cam bearing holes uh, so we'll know where to put those back to have a quick little reference for it i'm going to knock them out now start out we're going to figure out which collar fits um, so I'll give you a shot of this real quick also So we're going to be using, uh, it's a NAPA service tool, 2250 universal cam bearing tool. And I start with, we're going to figure out the right collar. I think this is it. Up, oh, up, oh, too big. All right, so that one will go all the way through it, but we're going to expand it. Um, so we're going to take and get the tool set up real quick and then I'll bring you guys back. Hang on. Alright, so got it screwed on our pole. Slide the pole up into the place. We're going to use a wrench, get a right size wrench for it. twist it to expand it get it just big enough to catch the bearing without going through the bearing Should be about right. Maybe a hair tighter. We don't want to expand it. 
We just want the drag. So should be good there. Take the mallet, tap it through. One bearing out. Now we're gonna take our wrench, loosen it back up. Like that. Loosen that. This is one of those deals that I wasn't really planning on having to replace the bearings. Again, going into it, but we're replacing everything else, and it's kind of a good thing I checked it, because, to be honest, these bearings have quite a bit of wear on them, it seems. So anyway, we'll be putting new ones in it. I got a new set on the way. Anyway, that's one. So then we put the tool back in and into the second one and we're going to actually hold them now before we go that route we'll unscrew the collar off the end here we have a, a cone shaped collar that will slide down on it and then thread the rod back on Now we go back up in the hole, back in over there, and this little collar here is made to center us and help us stay centered while we're doing the process. So now we take our wrench, tighten it back up, kind of give it a little back and forth you can start to feel it get some tension on the bearing start to snug up on it and that's all we want just a little snug and we can pull our wrench back off snug up in there press that little cone up into place I like, to, like you put your hand against the cone keep that pressed in the hole on the front and then you can kind of hold in on the on the pipe and the collar and just like that it's out pretty straightforward guys not a whole lot to it put a wrench back on it loosen it again Rinse off of it. Slide the bearing off. Into the next one. Inspect the bearing. There again, it's pretty worn. Coating's all the way gone on most of it. Feels a little rough. Alright, keep going. Center it up. Wrench down there on it. Snug it up till you feel a little. Try to pull out on the back on the tool a little bit, and it wants to grab it. Should have it there. Snug it a little bit. 
center of this front collar. Pop the wrench back off. Come on, wrench. Hold pressure in on the rod and on the cone. The wrench. See if I can get you in, in there real close. Give you a good shot inside. So we drove the bearing out. See, I might have to all right, guys, my apologies on this one. We actually did lose a little bit of the footage. Had a really good um, shot up close of knocking the bearings out of the last two positions. And unfortunately, it looks like I hit the wrong button and um, did not actually record it. I turned the camera off instead of on, I guess. Uh, so that's my, my apologies on that one. Um, really hate we missed it. But anyway, we're going to pick right back up here with what we do have left, um, going over the last couple of details of what we're going to do, and then, uh, you know, of course, off to the machine shop with the block. So anyway, I apologize for the lost footage, guys. Stick with me. All right, so the front and back here have plugs in the oil galleys. Uh, the front has like your regular uh, standard style with the really small little pinholes you probably can't see it in there but the back on this block I got on if they all come like this or not but on this one if you can see it it already has the screw in style so we're gonna knock those out real quick um, and we're going to tape and like I said we're going to tap all these holes um, up here and do vent tubes in it um, for the basically to let the crankcase pressure escape up through those holes without having to fight the oil as it's coming through and it'll also keep the oil from dropping down on the rotating assembly all across the whole way um, and making for a lot more windage than we would have otherwise and I opened these holes up back here and at the front drop those down and, and opened them up from you know so it'll get a little bit better flow so all the oil now will drain back front and rear um, on the motor that way like I said we'll just have a lot less windage that way so that's what we're gonna do there I gotta knock the front uh, plugs out here and then once we get those knocked out we're going to drill and tap those for the screw in style plugs. Um, a lot of folks, from what you can tell on the forums, um, it's got these little small teeny holes in there um, drilled in the center of those caps. This motor from the factory, when you're running a factory uh, water pump, it has a drive gear that runs in there, and supposedly it's to help lubricate the drive gears. Um, the timing chain. I'm sure you know we get more oil from it also but uh, from Golan and some other LT1 guys that do these engines a lot they all say the timing chain gets plenty of oil from the splash and everything in the in the pan and the rotating assembly you know coming off the crank and stuff like that so I don't think it's gonna be an issue I'm just gonna do screw ins on it uh, like I said, we knocked the oil plug, the freeze plugs out of it all the way around, except the back. I still got to knock those out um, once I get it off the stand. We knocked the cam bearings out all the way through it. Uh, we're getting down to the, the bare bones here. We're, we're Like I said, we're basically done, um, other than I want to tap those holes before I take it to, uh, take the block to the machine shop. I'm going to have them double check everything um, I, I'm gonna actually put the dial board gauge in it and see what kind of si what size we're at now how much 
um, clearance we have to the side, you know, on the pistons. And then I'm going to have them check it out, make sure they don't see anything in particular that they think they need to do that maybe I'm missing. Um, yeah, once they check it out, get a clean bill of health, I'm going to have them um, clean it up really good. I don't know if they do acid dipping over there or not, or if they're just going to hot tank it, but we'll get something done to get it cleaned up real good. Um, after that, I'm going to bring it back. We're going to wash it down, get everything cleaned up as best we can, and we're going to start reassembling. So, like I said, I'm going to take the crank with me to get that polished out. The cam also, um, I guess I'll probably take the pistons and rods and everything and let them check those as well. Uh, might as well just kind of go through the whole thing at this point. We're here, so why not? Um, like I said, they may end up having to do something with the cylinder bores. I'm not sure. Uh, debating on putting new rings or going back with the old ones. Uh, like I said, I guess I'm just going to kind of go with their recommendation. Whatever they end up saying they want to do with it, I guess, is what we're going to do with it. Um, want to do it on a budget, but I also want to put it back together and have it, and feel good about it. Feel like we did the right thing. So that's where we're at with it, guys. Um, I appreciate you staying out here with me tonight in the shop, um, working on this OLT1. I know uh, it's definitely it's not the most... Um, used engine there's not as many uh there's definitely not as many of them out there it's not as mo as prevalent as some of the you know like your first gen small blocks your ls is a lot more people involved with all that so trying to do something a little bit different um i really back when i bought this i didn't even know about the ls this was back i don't know uh, what 15 12 15 years ago when i first bought the car i really didn't even know that much about the stuff at the time if i had i might have probably just went to the ls to start with but you know i have really enjoyed the lt motor man it's been it was really strong when it was running before i'm sure to be strong again should be way stronger than it was because back, back when uh last time it was together it just had completely factory heads on it so now i got full ported heads um you know with nicer valves and we got uh, freshened up bottom end and yeah so pretty excited man all right that's going to do it for this one guys um, if you haven't already done so comment like and subscribe down um, at the bottom and we'll see you guys on the next one thanks